So here on the lower Westfield River, we're about a mile and a half away from where the Westfield joins the Connecticut River, the confluence of the two rivers. And here, under the waters, and maybe if we're lucky enough, we're gonna see them, are massive schools of shad and alewives, along with some blueback herring mixed in, making their way up the river to spawn. Now here in western Massachusetts's Connecticut River Valley, this has been going on, wow, as long as the river's been here, and as people have come up the river and established settlements, they've looked right through the native people's fish wares, places where the Agawam and the Warnock people caught these fish. And while they've established fish ladders and fish elevators in the area by federal mandate, people around here still just kind of look at the rivers as an inconvenience, a reason to have to build a bridge. Most people never get down and look at the rivers. Meanwhile, out on Cape Cod, communities like Brewster and Harwich are seizing on the annual run of river herring and alewives as a reason to celebrate. And they've opened up herring and alewife, they call them river herring there, river herring and alewife run parks where people can, you know, tourists can appreciate the phenomena of nature. In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit of the action that occurs in Brewster every year in April and May when the blueback herring run or river herring run is taking place. In this episode of Fishing Historic Places, we're going to be bringing you the Brewster herring run. Problem though, nobody's perfect. And I shot the video on super slow motion. The sound was off. And as a result, I'm going to have to voice over it. But check it out, and if you get out there, see it for yourself. So the reason for the Brewster Herring Park is that, that once upon a time, in fact for a long time, a mill had existed on a beautiful little stream that flowed down into Buzzards Bay. That mill had impounded a reservoir to use to keep the mill powered all summer long. And of course, that meant a dam was needed. And that dam blocked the access of the herring to the spawning grounds that they had traditionally taken advantage of for time immemorial. Well, the result was a glut of herring under the dam. And lobster men for years and years would show up with their nets or their traps or just a bucket and scoop the herring out and they seemed inexhaustible. And they'd use them as bait for lobsters and fishermen would use them as bait for stripers. They make great bait for stripers, by the way. I've used them myself. But once upon a time, it seemed like they would never disappear. I remember when the Connecticut River and the Westfield were so full of them that you couldn't get your shad dart down to the shad because you'd be bouncing off the backs of the blueback herring. Well, Brewster decided to put in a fishway around the mill's dam, a little ladder, if you will, that allows the herring to step by step move their way up from the estuary that goes into Buzzards Bay up to the spawning grounds. And it's awesome because the community has made a little bit of a park. There's some picnic tables and pathways and bridges that allow spectators to get in tight and see the herring and alewife migration. And while a park dedicated to an anadromous fish migration might seem to be a strange theme on which to base a park, based on the attendance that I saw there on a Friday morning, I got to tell you, I was a little bit shocked. There were a lot of people going with their kids, entire families, grandparents. I was a little worried that some of them were going to take a tumble because there are several places where the crowds were coming out on the rocks to get a good view of the herring, moving up the stream, going from step to step in little rushes. 
and they've got flowers planted, and that's kind of cool, and there's ducks doing the things that ducks do, which entertain the little kids especially, and frogs, and assorted other fish, and of course, lots of people checking it all out. It was really a cool sight to see and made me think maybe this kind of thing ought to be more popular in different places. As you can see here, the people are gawking, but up above my head, there's another gawking going on, and that would be dozens and dozens of various gulls and terns that were just as interested in those herring as the crowd was, except for they were looking for a little bit of lunch, and they didn't care that the herring were threatened. They were going to eat if they had the chance. So all the way along the stream, there are little viewing pools. If you make the trip out to Brewster or Harwich, go on Amazon and order yourself a pair of polarized glasses for 15 bucks. It'll really increase the experience for you. Or if you got some, make sure you bring them. But it's really a neat thing to see. From the time of the native people, in this case the Nosset Indian, Blueback herring, owlwives, and shad have been exploited and overexploited. You might have heard about the little trick the native people had on the Cape of putting some dead herring underneath the mound of corn in order to fertilize the seeds. Might seem to you to be kind of cool, but it might be looked at as a little bit wasteful, eh? And that's the thing with blueback herring. For years and years, they were so inexhaustible, everybody took too many. Now these critters are threatened, and it's little parks like this and the educational experience presented by them that are going to save these fish if they can be saved. And God, we got to hope they can be, because they're such a huge part of the food web of the northeastern part of North America. These guys migrate all the way up uh, to Greenland and Iceland, where they... They grow up and mature, and then they come swimming back up to the very stream that they were spawned in. And they're found all over from down in the Delaware Bay and even below that into the Chesapeake, all the way up into the Maritimes. But here in Brewster and Harwich, they made a park It's out. really a lot of fun to check it out, but remember, if you live in the Pioneer Valley, your own rivers and streams below the dams, there are still some little dams on the smaller tributaries. The rivers and streams are teeming with life as schools of these fish head back up the river to lay their eggs and begin the process all over again. It's pretty fascinating.